Hello to everyone in Birdville ISD. I want to welcome you back for another school year. I hope you have had a restful and enjoyable summer. The administration has been busy preparing for your return and the return of many students in the days ahead. I would like to talk with you about leadership for a results-based culture. It is founded on my belief that results matter. While we all have opinions and ideas, the ones we embrace should be supported and substantiated by outstanding results. If they are not, we should be back at the drawing board searching for practices that lead to the results that are ultimately desired. I would like to visit with you and also present some challenges to you about creating a culture that is results-based, using collaboration as we plan for learning, using data to inform decisions, being transparent and providing clarity in our work, and demonstrating professionalism as we build trusting relationships with our students and our school community. I will begin by saying that a results-based culture is purposeful and intentional. It focuses on desired results. An effective results-based culture permeates throughout the organization with a laser focus on performance at high levels. When optimal results are not realized, the expectation for change resulting in improvement is an inherent expectation throughout the system. So I ask for each campus and department to examine your organizational health to ensure that the culture is results-based and includes an expectation of doing whatever it takes to perform effectively and efficiently. An area of focus in our district is on collaboration, working together as a cooperative team as opposed to working in isolation. Educational expert Mike Smoker stated that isolation is the enemy of improvement. I do believe there is definitely strength in numbers. The team is stronger than any individual and the likelihood of missing the target is lessened with effective collaboration. It is also more likely that effective practices are shared and replicated in a collaborative environment. The professional learning communities concept offered by Dr. Rick DeFore and his colleagues is a tool that fosters collaboration among educators, one that discourages working in isolation. The four questions that should be guiding many of our discussions come from the PLC concept. These questions focus on what students should be learning, how we will know when they have learned, how we will respond if they are not learning, and how we will respond when students come to us with the planned learning in place and with the ability to learn more. In his book, Learning by Doing, Rick DeFore stated, when a school or district functions as a professional learning community, educators within the organization embrace high levels of learning for all students as both the reason the organization exists and the fundamental responsibility of all those who work in it. This belief leads me to explore planning for learning as compared to planning for teaching. Certainly, delivery of the curriculum is important, and we must examine the effectiveness of teaching. However, it is the learning that is the desired outcome. It is the learning that determines the effectiveness of teaching. Planning for teaching focuses on the teacher's role in the classroom. While we all know how important the teacher is, it is the learning that we measure and it is a learner that should be the focus as we plan. Planning for learning focuses on student engagement and what students should be able to do as a response to the teaching. It is a subtle but very important shift to focus less on what the teacher is doing and more on what students will do in the classroom and what they should be able to do if learning has occurred. We must have evidence to validate that learning has occurred at the level needed for success. Evidence is needed to support decisions involving the structures used to group students in the classroom, as well as the strategies used to engage students in learning experiences that ultimately lead to optimal performance. Data should come from a variety of formal and informal assessments, as well as work samples to determine whether mastery has occurred or if interventions are needed. Systems and processes both at central administration and the campuses must be in place in order to achieve and sustain achievement at high levels. One initial system that must be in place is determining standards which impact the level in which we work. We must clearly define and articulate the standards to all stakeholders. We are committed to involving teacher leaders and campus administrators in designing these standards of what students should be learning, which is curriculum design. 
We will also work to support teachers in the delivery of the curriculum, focusing on a variety of ways to engage students in learning so that the standards are met and the students are prepared to proceed successfully throughout our system. Clarity and transparency must define how we conduct our work. We must be open and completely honest about what we do, how we do it, and whether or not the results demonstrate that we are a highly effective organization. A colleague recently said that clarity precedes competence. I agree that we must be crystal clear in what the goal focus should be and the desired level of outcomes that are expected. With clear understanding of the target and with systems of support in place as needed, competence can and should follow results matter. For us to continue our practice in the same manner, whatever we are doing must be working and resulting in good things for our students. It cannot be about anything other than evidence of the attainment of stated goals for our students. As educators, I'm certain we desire to be considered professionals. Certainly, when our own child is sick and we take them to the doctor, our expectation is the doctor will effectively diagnose, prescribe, and treat them. If the treatment prescribed is not working, meaning our child is not getting better, would we not expect the doctor to reevaluate, consider a different treatment, a different medication, or possibly consult a trusted colleague to get a second opinion? I think as a parent, I would expect that from my child. And I would think most doctors, as professionals, would expect parents to react in this way. I would hope as educators that we would respond in the same manner that we expect a doctor to respond when our methods in education are not being effective. After all, it should be about the results associated with each child, and we should be committed to doing whatever we can, exhausting all measures to ensure the success of each child to the fullest extent possible. Legendary coach Bear Bryant once said to set goals high goals for you and your organization. When your organization has a goal to shoot for, you create teamwork, people working for a common good. If results matter, then our goals should not be on us as educators, but rather it should be on the students. We must take our personal feelings out of the equation when making decisions to reach the goals based on needs that are best for our students. This includes making difficult decisions as leaders that are often not easy and not popular. We all heard when we were teenagers that it is not about popular decisions, rather it's about making good decisions, the right decisions. In education, it must be the decisions that are best for the students with outcomes where there is a preponderance of evidence to support the decisions that are made. With the belief that all students need to experience some level of success, I ask that you now look to your campus or department leader with an open mind, with a willingness to do whatever you can to ensure success for as many students as possible. Be willing to try new things if there is even a slight chance that your students will experience higher levels of success. For many of our students, their success depends on us. How well we design and deliver the curriculum is critical. How well we monitor progress and provide successful interventions to better ensure student success will determine our overall level of success as a system. However, if we constantly diagnose, collaborate, and adjust our prescribed plan of action as needed, and if we share best practice that is proven with successful results, then the probability that our students will experience success rather than disappointment is greatly enhanced. The manner in which we conduct our work on a routine basis is very important because we are what we repeatedly do. Our habits can be powerful or they can be insignificant. Aristotle once said that excellence therefore is not a single act but rather a habit. Just as we know that good habits of exercise and diet will likely lead to a healthier body, Good habits in our schools will likely lead to healthier students academically. Let's be certain our educational habits are adding value in setting our students up for success for their future. A future of opportunity that includes challenges and uncertainty, but a future in which they are prepared to succeed. We should be certain that we are spending our time and money on things that we truly value. Things that have been identified as a goal or stated need. Let's be sure what we do with our time and money are in alignment with our values and goals. 
I've often heard that seeing is believing. However, I feel that if you have faith and true commitment to a cause, that believing is seeing may be more appropriate. If you believe in the system, if you believe in yourself, and if you believe in your students, then I think you are able to see what you believe. If so, you will then see the best in your colleagues, the best in yourself, and the best in your students. And if you do, then you will believe that anything is possible. Destiny is not a matter of chance, but rather a matter of choice. Let's commit to making the choices that are right for the needs of our students. Let's not be quick to question something because it is different, but rather question things when they prove to not be in the best interest of our students. Our students are counting on us to do just that. And again, some of their futures depend on it. My final point is to say that education is a relationship business. I plan to take Phil Selecty's advice for superintendents, which is while clarifying the vision for our district, I must personalize my relationship with principals. Principals must in turn form trusting and effective relationships with teachers while executing a plan to achieve the vision. Teachers, you must form trusting relationships with your students and their parents. A quote from a student once said that my favorite teacher was my fifth grade teacher because she taught me something very important. She taught me to believe in myself. Building trusting relationships throughout the organization will serve as a strong foundation for student success. I would like to say thank you for choosing to, to conduct your work in Birdville ISD. Whatever your role may be, working directly with students or supporting those that do in some manner, thank you in advance for the difference that you will make this year. I want you to know that I believe in our community, I believe in the leadership that permeates throughout our school district, and I believe in the trusted individuals who interact with our students. Therefore, I believe that great things are on the horizon that we will all be able to see in the near future if we indeed create and sustain a results-based culture, utilize effective collaboration as we plan for student learning, use evidence and data to guide decisions and affirm learning, provide clarity in our work and be transparent about what we believe and how we conduct our work, demonstrate professionalism in all that we do, having an open mind to new ideas and approaches, and if we build trusting relationships with our students, our colleagues, and our school community. I hope your professional learning time is productive over the next few days. I wish for each of you a rewarding and fulfilling school year. I look forward to partnering with you as we continue to strive for excellence in student achievement throughout our school district. It is about our students and results matter. I wish the very best to you all. I look forward to seeing you on your campus very soon and I especially look forward to celebrating with you in the near future. Have a wonderful school year.